right. We are back. We are simulcasting, and we have a special group of myself, David Stig, and Mike and ah. Harvings with us. Welcome back, Mr. Stig. You just got back from the eye of the Sahara and well glad you're back and glad you can make yeah, it. I got home safe I'm here sorry I don't have my camera on that's a shot of Morocco I went there too I went to five countries including Paris but that didn't count so four countries so that's a shot of Morocco right there and as you back yeah, that's why I almost went there I almost went to that spot but um I'm learning about Morocco I want to go back for sure and the Mauritania, yeah, third time in the Rashad structure. I got to get back there again, but uh, the next time has to be a special trip for me. I got to take a, a camel tour, apparently, to get to the Giants uh, Quarry, a place that I so named because it's so big and visible on the Google Earth. But uh, I had to go back this time to see Randall Carlson. If you didn't know, Randall Carlson talked about the quarries in this structure that were being uh, quarried by somebody uh, hundreds and thousands of years ago. He said 1.2 million is what Randall Carlson said. So it's really? like, what, what, where, where did that number, what paper you've been reading, Randall? He didn't say that. He didn't tell us that. So yeah, I had to go look when I got there, it was a little chaotic, but I saw for sure. I was there where uh, the chert outcrops he was talking about. That's so, wild. That's amazing. Yeah. I hopefully will be able to go. If it's next year, hopefully I can come with you on that trip. I'm doing okay. tours. It's 30,000 US dollars. And that's Damn. for one, that's for one half person. So oh well, well, we'll see. Maybe maybe two years from now. We'll see if uh, <laughs> you do Malgrin. No, really, I'll tell you what, or I just tell you how to go by yourself. Yeah, okay. It cost my first trip cost me under two thousand dollars. To get to the eye of the Sahara. I don't know if I could do it again for that price at this point. That was in 2022. But uh, it's not undoable. And Jimmy Corsetti of Bright Insight, I, you might have heard of him. He says he's going. I I, I want to try to go with him. You should. I want to try. Should. But I, it's up to him, not me. I mean, I'm game. I'm down. Because oh, I, yeah. I know it can only help me. But uh, no, it was it Atlantis? I, I'm... I'm there. I, I mean, even if it wasn't Atlantis, what's with all the canals? What's with all the quarries? What's with the weird uh, stuff that I showed you last time? And I found even more now and I, and demonstrated it from the ground. I went there another place, but I don't want to talk too much. You have a guest, Mike. Who's Mike? Where is he? I'm here. Yeah. Hi, Mike. Yeah. I got Mike. Nice to meet you. Carvings.com. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I don't really have a website going, but check out my YouTube channel uh, at Stig Works or my full name. And uh, I got a lot of stuff going on with uh, Atlantis. And uh, by the way, Ancient Aliens, I just got an uh, Anunnaki warning. And, uh, you know, I I can get into my, my feelings about E.T. in general, but um, I alien the uh, Ancient Aliens theory unfortunately is kind of stuck in my ribs it's the thorn in my side i don't want to be genetically altered but it seems like that's what's been happening right yeah, yeah. I, i'm gonna say that that's exactly what's happened here in the past I, I feel that. it's like you, you just don't want that to be the truth but all the evidence seems to keep pointing out to it and that most likely it was some sort of master creator like group maybe like this guy here beings exactly that came and founded this planet that would have been doing that terraforming the leftover million year old runes that stig's been investigating essentially look what i found in south africa and then also in new mexico it's just insane and it just doesn't make sense. I don't even talk about this stuff in the mainstream. When I say mainstream, I'm talking about the Rashad, Jimmy Corsetti world. I don't want to start talking about this other stuff on the side because people navigate away real fast. They don't yeah. want to. They don't want to stretch their brain to realize something freaking big has been going on. 
Yeah, there's a definite cover up, and I, I can I can pretty much prove it. I mean, the Nazca mummies are the proof, honestly. Uh, that's the biggest giveaway. That the fact that they're still saying that those aren't real uh, is absolute bullshit. Well, you know I can, what? like I, I said, I'm gonna, to way, I'm gonna open it up. I, I, I am gonna give. What do you mean the Nazca mummies? You know, I I don't know everything about all this, and I've heard that before. But can you just summarize a little bit more? Yeah, they're, they're, so we found um, we found depictions and statues of the three finger tridactyls in Mexico, and uh, there's been there's been close to thirty different species that they've they found. There's actually a lawsuit going on right now um, for a defamation of Jaime Mossum because he came out with this truth with credible scientific information, and th they completely shut him down and had someone come out with a, a false report stating that they were manufactured. But that that's absolutely not true. Um, I have dissection videos. I have x-rays. I have full, full radiology, uh, full 3D uh, CT scan renders of, of these beings inside and out. There's eggs with fluid inside of them, embryos inside of them that have been identified. I mean, I, I could go on on this for some time. Uh, it's, it's really um, un, undeniable at this point to me. But it's just crazy that they're still saying that it's it's not true. You know? I missed the word. Did you say it sounded like you said pterodactyls? But what was that it's word? You said? The, the the species is tridactyl. It's t uh, oh. t r uh, y d a c t l e, I believe, and that's because of the type of being that they are. They were they were called that scientifically for whatever purposes. I, I can't elaborate on, but uh, yeah, that that's the scientific name of the species. Gotcha. Gotcha. Rain, Reptilian. Mike, Mike even uh, purchased a couple of the mummies themselves and they confiscated them. Yeah, they confiscated oh, them. They, they x-rayed them at DHL and could see the bones. And so they uh, they, they wanted to, you know, uh, research them. They, they dissected them and, and came out with a, a report from Peru stating that they were biological beings and that the, the they were not modified in any way. Um, but still, even with that press release from Peru, the American tabloids and the world tabloids did not recover that part, and, and they still refuse to to this day. I'm so who's but, they? Is the Peruvian well, government they or American? Well, the, the Peruvian government actually came out and said that they were real. Um, it, 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 they had 12 of their high doctors, PhDs, etc., all sign off on it with the lab paperwork and, and everything. They had DNA tests done by, by multiple uh, different laboratories to confirm. And um, yeah, that, that was December 7th, 2023, when they came out with that report as Peru. Um, and my, my mummies were seized on October 7th. And uh, it, you know, they, they did all the research at University of Ica, documented it very well. And then in January, I think on the, like, like the 11th, uh, they they came out and said that it was all fake. Oh really? Oh yeah! What a turnaround! Yeah, right? <laughs> and zero evidence given, and then they also wouldn't give you back your quote unquote fake mummies that you had purchased. Even right. Well, they they used them in the lab yeah, to identify fake, if they were uh, real or we not. We had to destroy your evidence to prove that it wasn't. Yeah, they evidence. they never showed us that they were fake or how they were assembled or anything like that. Even though we have full scans that show that there's not an entry or an exit into the body, full scans that show that there's no adhesives or any sort of, you know, because you can see adhesives when you're doing radiology. It's it's obvious because of how they're made and, and almost, you know, unless it's organic, uh, but then if it's organic, it'll be carbon testable and, and you can see with an SEM uh, really what's inside of it and, and how it was made at that point. So it's not that, you know. Okay, so this is a little distraction, but it just happened. I, I have a file I created in, uh, I like, uh, sorry, um, this most simplest file. Uh, sorry. Uh, anyways, the point is, is that I created a file .txt. It's titled Brian Forrester. It's on my desktop. I had one question in there for him. I click on it and it, I get two windows pop open. One has the question and now I've got a bl also a second file named brian forrester that's blank what the fuck windows 11 really it's yeah, should have gotten apple it. i yeah well i like uh -huh. cheap. i like cheap and, uh, <laughs> i can i trust them then i i give them my music and they, they take it away from me 
<laughs> yeah. right? it's, uh, I don't have any music it. anymore, by the way. It's all on the cloud in YouTube. Yeah, so Brian Forrester, and are we talking about elongated skulls here? I mean, I get a little oh, confused. Absolutely. There are. Yeah, and, look, look um, at this. This I'm is looking a, at uh, both, actually. Oh, whoa. Whoa. So, and so for uh, pretext. Yeah, I see Mike, that. That's very interesting. Mike got all of these artifacts from two locations in Mexico. Tulum. What are you and... holding right now? Exactly. It's not a skull, but a sculpture. It is. It's a crystal skull. Oh, crystal. Okay. So um, uh, we can agree that some people out there did mine their skulls. I'm thinking Correct. about what to ask Brian. But not in Peru. Did they bind skulls in Peru? No, I don't think you know, so. I, I would ask Brian what, what he found out about Guerrero, Mexico, and, and what he understood. Because he's posted pictures of uh, work and research that he's done in Guerrero. And Guerrero is a hot spot for these items as well. Like, the, these items here are from Guerrero. Um, but, you know, like, th this this piece here and, and multiple others are documented from start to finish. They they did the GPR scans. They dug down to 14-foot dig level, found a cave, and, and excavated the cave over, uh, like, a nine-month process um, every step of the way, every five-gallon pail. And it's about 1,500 meters from Tula B in uh, Tula Hidalgo there where the Atlantean statues that look, you know, similar to this guy here are standing. And... Uh, yeah, we, we, we have found a lot of relevance to Atlantis because, you know, if you look into the Anunnaki, they were supposedly, they came from the sea. If you look at the uh, reports of the Syrians or the Dogon people, they also believed in the Nomo who came from the sea. And uh, it, th this story, I, I think, goes into Japan, too, with the uh, being called Dugu, if I recall. Um, but it, nonetheless, this is a pretty consistent theme that these beings used to be in the sea. If you read J.J. Hurtock's work, uh, he actually talks about in the Book of Knowledge in 1973 that the people of Atlantis were aquatic beings and and could be uh, socializing in the in the water. So that that's an interesting tidbit too. That that guy's book has had more things come true than I think Nostradamus in terms of its prophecy. I'm sorry, which guy? Uh, J.J. Hurtock, uh, in the Book of Knowledge, The Keys of Enoch. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm going to have to read that one. I had not yeah, heard of well, it. Well, sounds, it sounds about... I mean, I'm learning a lot every day, but uh, th what's blowing my mind is the connection to, the first of all, the, the, first, the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, the New Testament, I don't want to get started. I don't want to piss people off, but it's obviously a construct that was reinvented and then reconstructed. But and then and the in the New Testament as well. But when you it's talk about the Enoch, power changed hands, yeah, yeah, you know that it went from from the fallen, from Enlil to Anki essentially, and and in that process, that's why you see it go from Enlil to Marduk in in the Babylonian history in terms of worship, and you'll also see it in the Egyptian as well, going from the old kingdom to the new kingdom, and the representation of the Eye of Ra versus the Eye of Horus, and they went from worshiping the Eye of Ra to the Eye of Horus, and and I think that's a really iconic thing to look at in, in Mesopotamia as well, is you have this conversion that, that somehow the people stopped believing in this guy and started started believing in this guy and that's consistent from the old to the new testament as well and and i think the names are just wrong in the bible it says you know the, that god has many names or the lord has many names and i i think that that's really um iconic to think about here considering how many tribes and and groups of um individuals that are on this planet and different beliefs but also how many of them are structured around a trinity yeah, I was just watching that today. Robert Seffer today. Oh yeah, he did something that it was had a trinity in it, yep. and it was the male, the female, and the sex act. That was the trinity he mentioned, and it went quickly from the title. Uh, yeah, that was today. Yeah, you see it in in uh, the Hindu culture as well with the uh, tri-faced uh, deity, and you'll see it here as well. Um, he mentioned the lingam in that video today, and it made me realize for the first time the lingam really is both genitalia, the male and the female genitalia together. So you got to right? think that they, that they used to be uh, both sexes probably prior to Adam, because it says in the Bible that you know Mary, or, uh, that Eve was created from Adam's rib. So does that mean prior to that, the sons of God are this, what they're listed at that come to mate with the the women of man? Um, but but 
you know, if they created Eve from the rib of man, then, then who did they mate with, essentially? Uh, who were these women, right? Maybe the, maybe the rib is where they took the DNA that they used to genetically modify the human. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of um, depictions like that uh, on these pieces. I don't even actually. I don't even like to think too hard about stuff like this because I can't fathom it. I can't control it, and so I'm. What is that? that, that I don't that either. But but when I when I see it in on these artifacts and I see it depicted in in plain as day uh, iconography, then I have to definitely think about it because it, it definitely brings a whole another notion of possibility. Um, that I, I normally couldn't accept prior, you know, when you see stuff. Yeah, like for this, sure. Look at this. Couldn't accept it. No way. No way could I have accepted it as well. I would have never have said that. Yeah, be like I'm with you 120 percent. Yeah, no, I I was an agnostic for 38 years of my life, and like I never really acknowledged Jesus until I found these pieces and started to make these connections and realize that it's not even about necessarily jesus but it's it's totally about this reign of power and uh, you know the jehovah's witness believe that that anki or excuse me that uh that, that uh, michael was the angelic version of christ before he embodied the flesh and in the bible it says that jesus assumed all the roles of michael when he uh, ascended down and so that that's really an interesting concept to think about is is you know what what this being was prior to and, you know, the story of someone like Anki, you know, he's the water god. And something with Michael, when whenever Michael came in the Bible, it would start raining. And I, I think that there's a connection there between these beings. You can see on this piece here, you've got the uh, the two serpents, you know. And, and if you go to the Anunnaki beliefs, their, their god was a, a primordial dragon. And so to see the sons of God as two serpents is logical and you see here the loaf of bread which is usually lord or god in the egyptian language and then the symbol of water so you have anki i believe is this serpent here uh, who also embodied like quetzalcoatl and, and multiple other um entities you know uh, i think that these beings that created this planet were probably ability to make themselves into lots of different beings maybe even simultaneously Thus, the uh, all the anthropomorphic figures and probable beings of that time are maybe yeah. widely recorded and not just fiction, like Horus. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and you look at um, Indian... Anubis, Anubis, right? And, and Anubis is the Greek equivalent of Hades, the dog. And and so what's really interesting is Hades was Zeus's brother, and Zeus thought of himself as the the god of all gods right and that he was number one and uh so what's interesting is it's anu bis in 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 latin bis means two so anu is the high god of the anunnaki and then bis is two and so what if you know uh that he was zeus's brother and and he you know uh, essentially was god number two and that's why he was named Anubis. And, and likely he went and did things in Egypt and stuff because uh, that's there's there's stuff of the dog recorded all over the place. But Well, we got the dog it, star, um, right? There's no uh, way serious. that they were. Yeah, there's no, are you serious? Uh, no, I'm, I'm dead serious. serious. <laughs> yeah. The dog star, okay, it's not on the ecliptic, right? So right. it's part it's part of a, but it is part of the Orion story. Orion, yeah. And uh, and there it is, and so of course they were worshiping that shit. It's the brightest star in the sky. Where is the Orion on here? Yeah, and so what's really interesting is the Dogon people, the people of the dog, they they're in uh, Mali, uh, Africa there, and they were exiled out of Egypt earlier than 3700 BC because when the Greeks got there 3700 BC, they came up on the the Dogon people and they documented them having this festival of the elliptical orbit of the second star of Sirius. And and so they named the substance that they were celebrating with cannabis because it was the two dog. That's what canna canine and then bis again from Anubis or whatever is, is number 2. So we have the cannabis for the two dog star people and that's why they named it that. Well, what's really interesting is they 
said that they brought it from the planet Sirius. Now, if you look at the, the word Sirius, what would people from Sirius be called? They would be called Syrian, right? And then you have the country Syria. You have Osiris or Osirius, if you spell it out. And, and you also have the Assyrian nation or Assyrian empire, who were the people who worshipped the Anunnaki. Uh, did, they did they worship? I mean, I they know did. That they certainly did tell the story. Well, I, I think I, it's I enough. Yeah, I think no, it's no, enough. no. They absolutely worshipped them because the Babylonian Empire worshipped Enlil until Marduk took the seat. What year? Any year on that? Uh, I, I'm not Marduk, because you just blew my mind. BC. So, sorry. BC. So, yeah. So what I should be asking is, can you say that name again? Uh, Mario. Marduk. Oh, Enlil. E E N L I L. Who's the brother of Anki, the water god? And, and I believe that the, uh, the these two beings have fought with each other, and they're, they're what caused the demiurge, and they're also what caused the creation of this nation or this universe, rather. You know, our universe is everly expanding, and you have to ask yourself, how is that even physically possible? Well, in the Bible, it says Michael pushed Satan, and if Michael is Anki, and Satan is in Lil, and when this when this push occurred, when they were fighting. That created this universe that we're in today. And the fall is what, what the created the Big Bang and then also created the expansion because the fall hasn't ended. And we're still falling or expanding, however you want to look at it. And by the way, what about expanding Earth? That's a new concept that I just have been presented with. Expanding yes. Earth instead of uh, Pangea, Pangea. What? Uh -huh. Yeah, Pangea can still be Pangea, but it's coming from a different direction now. Um, exactly. Getting a lot of expanding Earth. Earth. You know, well, I still think that must be pretty old. I mean, like, we're talking, like, when did water appear on this planet? Yeah. I mean, the dinosaurs were annihilated 65 million years ago. Am I wrong? So, therefore, yeah. the water was already around 100 million uh, years a two yeah. billion i think it's two billion or something yeah really okay yeah i used to look stuff like that up before ai i would ask google how old is the earth how old is the universe how yeah. how yeah how long has water been on earth it'd be like two billion exact years chat gpt spoils us for sure well i'm actually uh got a couple lies recently so i i do i'm very very cautious yeah. with the chat no you, you're right the, the google one's yeah. the worst Go, google one has lied to me more than anything i've ever seen and it yeah. actually it, it caused me to go out and spend ten thousand dollars on a server and start getting my own llm licenses so i can run my own llm and i'm going to feed it my own data and control my own rules because honestly there's no other safe way to get the answers to things that you want to know at this point in my opinion it sounds like we should be hanging out where are you located Approximately I'm in uh, Spokane, Washington. Okay. All right. I'm in down here in Soca Southern California. Oh, cool. I'm gonna are, be you gonna get, are you gonna be at contact in the desert? I don't usually do that. Um, that's up in what Joshua Tree? Yeah, it's Palm Palm Beach area. Yep. Palm Beach, I don't know. I know uh the high desert, Joshua Tree, 29 Palms. I live in Palm Springs. Or no, I that's think, where it is. Yeah, Palm Palm Springs. Yeah, no, it's in but, Palm but Springs. Still though, contact in the desert. I thought that was up in the Joshua Tree area. It, it's there. close. It's right at the border, I believe. You have a little metaphysics center going on. Yeah, but yeah, nice I'm right here. Hotel. And that's yeah, where I met Jimmy be. Corsetti last, and I went to CPAC in Rancho We've, we've got a booth that's going to be there, and, and I'll be there uh, all, the, all the days. So yeah, if you stop through, definitely say hi. What's the date on that? Uh, yeah. It's the end of, end of May, first part of June. Okay. I think that should be doable. Oh wow! I'm supposed, good, I'm supposed to go to Taiwan this week, but I'm getting antsy about it. Like I want to back out of the whole trip for some reason. Maybe this whole thing that happened at home. Go with your gut. Exactly. Well, let's just say I've been busy. I uh, I don't know if you've seen. Um, I I don't think so. I, but other platforms I've shared what I'm doing. A lot of construction. I'm 56. I'm getting old. I can't do all this work. For sure. But uh, you got a lot of stuff. Uh, that's Spokane, Washington, huh? Yep. Crypto, you're yeah, in Spokane. I, I've been you're in Washington, this. too, right? I put out two no, books no. so far, and then I have a third book coming out that, that goes in directly to my theories about the connections to Atlantis here. So when I get that done, I'll definitely share it with you so you can check it out. 
I think uh, with Atlantis, I'm trying to keep it simple these days. Yes, Atlantis, but yes, pre-Atlantis cataclysm. Atlantis was the end, right? That was the cataclysm. They yeah. were already like uh, turning their backs on the rest of the world. I think they were getting fighting, starting trouble, being dicks, Cre creating suddenly creating beings that weren't supposed to be created and stuff. Well, see, um, you know, that's something I don't mentally do. You're connecting um, the Anunnaki with Atlantis directly. And, uh, uh, no, I, no, I it says that the Atlanteans uh, were, were uh, misusing and mistreating the uh, the DNA uh, or, or the uh, – it's not – it doesn't say DNA in there, obviously. Uh, but I was just watching a thing about this, and, and uh, yeah, it went into detail that they, they – they were they were uh, abusing the God, what was the genetic, no, but that's not it though. It was something more um, you know ancient sounding than that. Hmm. Yeah, either way, I'll, I'll try to reference it a little bit better and uh, and find. Well, you're not it saying here. Plato said that. Who said it? Somebody. Uh, uh, that's I, I'm not a hundred. That's why I say I, I'll try to get the reference. I mean, what do we have for sources for Atlantis? <laughs> we've got Plato, and then of course we've got other sources in Egypt on the on the. Um, on the temples, and mm -hmm. now we've got people saying, "Oh, Plato got it wrong. It was not nine thousand years; it was nine thousand months, or some shit uh, like yeah. that." We, no, we, we think around ten thousand five hundred years because of the carbon dates and and where this stuff lies. As yeah, well, well we've got you that. The younger, the younger dry ass uh, sure. period that caused sure. the ice age, likely the same event. I, I'm trying I, to do my my uh, uh, Graham Hancock impression, but I it just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's like 12,800. He says 12,006. I was just listening. But who knows? That could have been a couple of years ago. So, uh, yeah, I, I, he's one guy. I just can't. He was born in Scotland. Oh. Yeah, yeah I mean, but of course, 10, he doesn't have a Yeah, that is about oh, 12,000 yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. 10,000 BC plus two. And I think the number he was saying in the last lecture was 12.6. 12, six. Okay. 12, six. Yeah, or 11.6. I could see that. 11.6, 12.6. Yeah, no, Graham sees 11 sometimes. It's in that millennium. In that sure. right. Either way, right around 12,000, basically. Right at the Younger Dryas event. Look, I've got a lot of uh, discoveries in the Rashad structure, that whole area. You mentioned Molly. And I can tell you mm -hmm. right now, there are artificial mountains in Mali. You can look that. closely at them. They're basically ancient mining tailings, uh, overburdened dumping in rows after rows after rows. I'll show you if I get a screen later on. I'll show you if I don't crash okay. out. Um, kind of started early today. I, I've been, ever since I got back from Europe, I just haven't been able to get with this American thing. And then we have the time change. But I've been crashing out at like 6 p.m. What is it now? Uh, <laughs> it's 9, Look, 9.38 right now. I think I'm doing okay. You but, are. We got you late tonight then. Yeah. Well, a lot of other times I put up a video. I just put up a short. And um, I'm kind of looking forward to the results. But I, I'm kind of done with YouTube. You do, certainly do have a lot of crystal skulls there. That is this quite is a bone on here. Now, what about that one crystal one that's so clear? I used to watch it back. I'm old, right? So we were talking about like in search of. You're talking about Einstein or. No, uh, there's this one crystal skull. Apparently it's one Hedges. of five. I don't know. It's been a while. I think that's Mitchell Hedges. Also, a couple of them are flutes too. You got to show Stig the flute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I'll play one here for you. This is a, a hollowed out skull here these eyes are the the reeds to play it it weighs about 20 pounds it looks like a shell that's heavy yeah it's a rock that's a good question are all of those mexican carvings that's what somebody just asked yep everything's from mexico wow yeah. <laughs> I yeah, got a couple of pictures. Of, I got a couple of pictures of me in the mouth of Charlotte's Quindley. Oh, did I just say the wrong word? Sorry, I said the wrong word. 
Uh, that's uh, the Mexican hairless dog, Sholos Quintley. I meant to say, um, the, yeah, the, the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl, yeah. I, there's a there's a couple pictures. I just edited it out. I got a little video. Maybe I'll even show it to you if we uh, share screen. But um, so yeah, um, uh, there is a lot of uh, you've shown me a lot of stuff I've never seen before, and I grew up around Mexican sculpture. I really did. Yeah. So it's like now you you've got like I don't know your source. Where are you getting this stuff from? Well, I, I suggest checking out our feed on on TikTok because I document it very in depth there. Uh, it's at, at Alien Carvings. Um, I've also put out two books that you can get on Amazon if you uh, if you search for uh, my name, which is Michael Forrest, or you can search for uh, Tula, uh, T U L A. Or Oelos, that's O J U E L O S. There was a glitch. Um, Just repeat that one more time. That last link. Uh, uh yeah, Oelos uh, or or Tula. Um, on what was on that Amazon. last one? Oelos. How did you spell it? The last it's one you o spelled. O J U E L O S. Gotcha. And so there's there's pieces that look like this. You know, all of this here is from Oelos. And you can see there's complex mosaics here. Um, this red glue has been carbon dated over 50 times with consistent dates 10 to 20,000 years ago. Um, you know, they're, they're really complex creations. This is a pipe here that's a mosaic. That one you were just showing kind of looked uh, almost Egyptian. The, the yeah, one, there's... that one bird, uh, the, uh, the bird with the eye. What is that? It, it is. It's, a, it's Horus likely. Oh, it's yeah. A yeah, Horus is depicted oh, on tons oh, of these pieces. Uh, so is the Scarab, Thoth, Anubis, Sekhmet, um, Sobek. It, you know, quite a few of them have, have shown up on these pieces. Um, Basically proves global civilization, right? Like there was an yeah, ancient, it, transcontinental, it, advanced civilization. We got that one right there. That's, on not, one not, the that's not Mexican. Sorry, that's not Mexican right there. What was that? That was Persian. No, that well, last Mexico. one. That, well, okay, we're, we're, but we found direct Anunnaki evidence. Look at this. This is a Mexico cup here. This is this is the tree of life with the pine cones that all these beings are passing. You wow. see here the winged sun disc, the crescent moon, crescent moon that the Muslims worship. You got the belt here of Orion. This oh my god, that's bold to the right. Oh my god, you know what? I really want to share this a picture with you. That skull to the right it looks like ET. Uh, I have a, a a picture that I just saved on my desktop that is almost exactly like that skull, that ET skull, that elongated skull, right next to the one you were just showing to the right. Not that uh, to the right. Um, that's a uh, that's a pine. That's a pineal. Oh, the pine wow. cone, right? The pineal. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, they pass. I've got the pine cones uh, here. You know, there, there's the one to the right. Touch the one on the right. Touch it. That one? The big one. The big one on the table next to the the Sumerian looking one that looks like Anunnaki stuff right there. This guy here? No, 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 no. You, It's all right. Uh, the, <laughs> the last table. It, it, I'm telling you, I've got a, I've got a picture I want to share. Yeah, it is hell, one hell of a uh, Shermanator says that's one hell of a connection collection. It really is. Yeah, I've been documenting this for four years. When I when I started documenting it, you know, the government said it was all fake, and uh, and and there was things about it that were you know very strange. Like this here has complex formula looking stuff on it. I, I found numerous astrolabes. Uh, even this one here is a four foot disc. This thing weighs over two well close to two hundred pounds or so, uh, at least a buck fifty. It's got a lot of really crazy alchemical glyphs on it. And, what the uh, heck is happening in that image right there? It looks like some type of a locust of worship or something. Like so much in that. In each artifact, it's crazy. But on the back of it is what I was showing here. You can see it's got the, one of the astrolabes, uh, you know, the, the North Star here in the middle. And then you've got your different constellations depicted. Like a straight Sumerian star calendar, star bingo oh my gosh very heavy and this stuff i mean it, I, i've documented it they found these holes in the ground and this stuff's this stuff's on the ancient bedrock too it's not just in these carvings 
it's on the walls of this place as well. And everything has luminescence or phosphorescence. Um, and I mean, 95% of the specimens, you can see when I turn off the light here, I mean, this stuff is still glowing. Steve, you still with us? You see, like, and Mike was the one that discovered that they glow. No, no. No? Oh, it was your I, buddy. I, it was your I, buddy. I, yeah, so my buddy found the phosphorescence on the Abuelos pieces. And, uh, but as oh, far as the Tulo, the Tulo pieces go, that, that's where I came in, and, and he didn't have any pieces from Tula. And I started checking the Abuelos pieces, and then all of a sudden, one of these things just started glowing green. It was one of the pine cones. And, uh, yeah, and then I, I, I mean, the guys down there now hit everything with a UV. You know, before, I, I had over 200 pieces, and they never offered anything that they were UV, which if you were to take the time and, and apply all this, you're definitely going to try to sell it especially in the in the depth that it is like the eye there and the way that the uh the shadow is you can see there's a lot of effort i'm still yet to find anything else like these it's just it's yeah no, i've never seen anything like that before in my life yeah that's where i was at too and i've been in lapidary for a long time you know my wife cuts opals and you know, so when I seen uh, archaeologist Mark Russell and TV show host Scott Waltar discussing this stuff and, and saying that it's real on America on Earth back in 19 or uh, 2019, you know, I couldn't help but but ask twice. And the government's sitting here telling me I'm it's safe for me to buy it. It's modern. It's got aliens on it. There's never any aliens back then, etc. Well, that might be why we have this large trail of, of war and, and cover up that, you know, people used to complain that they would bury stuff at the bottom of the Vatican. And whenever they'd find something crazy, the artifacts would disappear. I mean, we've heard these these rumors for, for as long as I can remember. And uh, I, I think they're not rumors at this point, or, or there might be some of them that are true. The evidence sure is pointing that way, like... Yeah, And the parallels between a lot of your artifacts, Uparts, and Klaus Donna's collections from the same area in Ecuador are just stunning. I heard rumor that he's planning to try to disclose something on this, but he's been, been real quiet and, and working really, really diligently to do so. One thing I, I noticed is really crazy, needs. so... So there's these pieces, right? I, I've started to make resin replicas of them. Um, I'm going to be promoting my book, and I wanted to have something that people could take with them that showed the symbology and stuff like that, and then people could help, you know, study it. And if the government ever changed their mind, that at least there would be lots of copies of these pieces out there uh, for people to learn from. And so as I was making some of these, I, I made a mold out of silicone, and as it was pouring, the hole right here in the silicone turned turned green or, or like a like it was a light greenish blue and i'm like what the heck and it's only the thing that goes through the drill hole and i was like what the heck and so i researched what could make silicone turn blue or purple or blue or green rather and, and, it, and the only thing i could find was copper and so what i thought was interesting that it was the drill hole that did this you know back in the day they used a lot of copper tools so what's to say that there were shavings in this drill hole that were of copper tools and so when it, it died the silicone i was yeah. just watching a mining a mining video um about this guy was mining um the tailings of an old ancient not ancient a couple hundred years old mine and he was finding blue and green some of it was copper some of it was something else interesting yeah so um I can't remember what it was, but it was like the 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 what was it? Copper is green. Copper turns probably green. a zinc. Yeah, maybe a zinc. Zinc. maybe yeah. zinc. Maybe zinc. Maybe zinc. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever blue was, it it was something in that mine. Just the fact All about that gold, right? Yeah, the monoatomic apparently. What was that thing you were saying about Guerrero, Mexico? Can you be more specific? 
Yeah, so uh, Brian Forrester posted here back in uh, 2021, I believe it was. It's probably still on his Instagram, but he posted a, a bizarre looking creature. It looked like the remains of uh, an alien, honestly. And, uh, and you know, he posted real briefly, uh, you know, something I'm doing research in Guerrero, Mexico, but that was it. He didn't elaborate on it. He didn't say anything. And I, I've never seen anything posted after. So maybe he disproved it. Um, I'm not sure, but but I think it would sure be interesting to know what he knows about these pieces and uh, specifically, you know, his work in Guerrero, because I know he was there on the ground, or at least that's what it said on his Instagram. And you said some of your artifacts are from that same area, correct? Yeah, yeah, I've got quite a few pieces, and a lot of the pieces that come from there are bone. You can see like this dagger here. You know, and it's got a different, definite, different look to it. What's also interesting is these bones are phosphorescent, and they show the same type of thing: the DNA, the, the angelic beings, yeah. you know, different masks and things. Um, so the bones can be carbon dated, and they're phosphorescent. Oh yeah, absolutely. As long wow. as there's collagen still that is existing, I've uh, we've done two samples off of these skulls. And didn't get any conclusive collagen, but now we had the uh, the guy from France come in. Um, he was here last week and took four samples off of two different skulls. Uh, we got it all on video, and so we should have a carbon date on one of these things here. Hopefully, here, uh, you know, he said about three weeks because he was going to be in New York for another week. So, all right, looking forward to that. Yeah, that that that's I'm waiting to put out the third book because I want to put that test in there. There's a large section on the bone skulls in there and and the research that we've done and stuff like that. So I just wanted to I really want to close it out with a date, you know. A hundred percent. That's huge. For sure. Hey, on a yeah. side note, I just because there's been kind of an outcrop of uh London Hammer posts on Twitter recently. Hmm. I mean, if you know you know about that London Hammer thing. No, I do not. It's just, it's basically, it looks like a sledgehammer from like the 1800s and okay. it's like embedded yeah. in concrete. And that, okay, look, I just want to say, I reached out to the organization that has that and I asked them straight up, did you carbon date it? And they said, no, they're a huh. Christian, they're a Christian organization. Yeah. Now, why would a Christian organization want to um, prove that something's super old? They wouldn't, right? They would right. want it to be 8,000 years old max or whatever, 6,000. Uh, so this organization says, no, we, we haven't carbon dated it. But these people saying 500 million years old, I, I don't know about that one. You got a handle. It's made of wood. Wood doesn't last that long. Right. So I, I don't really well, trust it. Depends. That, that's not true because it, it depends on how it was preserved. Everybody always says, oh, the age on these pieces, there's not enough erosion. Well, what you don't realize is that these are found in a packing of mud. And we found a, a ring. It looked like it was gold. He took it out and shipped it to me. Two weeks later, it's sitting here on my table. I've still got the dust here. You can see this green dust. This is the, the corrosion of this ring. It started to oxidize immediately. Well, not immediately, but over, you know, and it's completely almost gone. The ring's almost non-existent now. Really? It's I've never it's seen anything like it. It's made of gold. Uh, no, it looked copper, like gold. I was, um, I, it, it, copper doesn't yeah, doesn't uh, oxidize that fast. It has to be something fast, else, no. probably like zinc or something. Uh, I know if it's a pure enough form of zinc, it, it oxidizes really fast. But what's what's strange is is that it it didn't oxidize for them to make it and to have it. But now it does, and I don't. I just don't quite understand. You know, obviously, if it was packed in mud in the ground, it could prevent the oxidation from occurring. But how they were able to sport it back then and keep it from oxidizing is beyond me. That is very strange and anomalous. Yeah, it would have had to be very dry too to not. And, yeah. and, I, and I've bought you know uh, hundreds hundreds of items from this guy, and and he's supplied. I mean, I, I've handled at least 25 of, of the rings from Tula, and, you know, none of them did that. You know, most of them, a lot of them have tested. We found rhodium and, and silver, gold, tin, platinum, copper, zinc, you know, quite a, quite a few different elements, but nothing that's ever done that. Just wild. Man, every single artifact is truly a mystery. Oops. 
And that's why some of the Gene, red. Why beans. is Gene Splice commenting archaics? What what's so special about archaics? Well, There's just a conversation in the live chat on my channel about he went he went off on Jimmy Corsetti the other day. Yeah, that ah that that's a whole other rabbit hole but i i just don't buy that guy his past is just it's not good not good you mean the criminal past of archaics or the yeah, the yeah exactly the military I got nothing, nothing against jimmy jimmy I, I find to be a great guy but uh archaics not so much well i just i watched him when he went off on some somebody sent me the link and uh he was just being such a bully. It's like, oh my god! I actually AI'd the terminology for flexing or grandstanding. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was like, what's the word when you just you're all pumped up, bragging, chest pumping? Yeah, flexing, flexings. Uh, question in the chat: Any jade? And yes, there's Mike's got several yep. artifacts with jade. Yeah, the 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 one of the the big pieces that I've got. I just I just big did a color. silicone mold of it, so it's not down here. But yeah, I've shown them quite a few times before. I think there's some beads over here that are jade still. If I can get it to focus here for you, there we go. Some of these are adventuring, but like some of these are jade. Not the best specimens. We found some really nice specimens. Uh, nothing extremely large or anything like that. Um, you know, this is the parallel. There, there, there's two of these heads. There was the jade one that sits here, and then there's also a fluorite one about the same size. But this is about the the extent of the size of piece of jade that we found. There's also blue blue jade uh, here and there too. What the? Big alien elongated head guy on your main table with the gold eyes. Is that jade too or no? Nope, that's a, it's green banded calcite. Oh, right. Calcite. That's right. Yeah. That's why it's uh, so phosphorescent. It'll turn red usually. Seeing this cross is pretty uh, unique though, because it's not the onk. We found the Iron Cross as well as uh, one other two um, on pieces from this area. So it's interesting to see the different variations in existence at this time, if that's the case. Sorry, I was muted there while typing in the chat. We I figured we're like pulling a jewelry or something. Eating some food. <laughs> Wild that there's literally every symbol from every culture being represented most more or less numerous times across your artifacts. In some sense, yeah, but but none of it's actually mm -hmm. consistent to the languages that we know today. They're all proto languages are not consistent to um, what we see, you know, but it's it's definitely a cross contamination of, of many different languages. Um, I'll show you one over here too, real quick. You see this kind of variation occasionally also, which is kind of more like a um, pre synatic or, uh, you know, like a language from Canaanite or from Canaan, rather. <laughs> I like ah oh man and the bag there, but that's a long bag. Yeah, this is a different bag, and we found this bag depicted in a few different cases on these pieces. Um, most of the time it's not that bag, it's the, the standard, you know, this type. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. We found one piece with a depiction of, of a triangle looking bag like this. Um, the piece came out, I passed on it, didn't buy it, and uh, about two weeks later. They found this, and I did buy this. I wish I would have got them both, but I do have pictures at least. And the cones. There's some. There gotta be something to those. Oh, I should. I should make a copy of this. Heck yeah! Good idea, guys. 
<laughs> oh man, making making these molds has been really a, a interesting process. I was really against it when I first came across the idea because I didn't want to confuse people. You know, there's already a lot of naysayers on these pieces uh, due to the media and and the smear campaign. You know, kind of like it's like it's like cannabis or something. You know, everybody thinks it's going to kill your brain cells, and now all of a sudden it's a uh, you know legal and and utilized probably almost as much as alcohol. And you know, it's crazy. I feel you on that. I was, yeah, I didn't know what to make of myself, but it's like you're making clear ones and it's cool because it's keepsake. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're going to do all kinds of different ones. And, and, uh, you know, what my goal is, is there's a company that uh, does a, a NFT, um, where you can put a RFID chip in the piece and, uh, and then you can scan it and it'll show you the nft and and so what we're going to do is put the because it's it's uh resin we're actually going to embed the rfid chip into the resin and that way you can scan the piece and see the nft and it'll show you a 3d scan of the object it'll tell you the history and what we know about it we'll keep that up to date as we learn and and you know show where it's located and and that way it's got not just a keepsake but it's also a historical record which justifies it a lot more and, and i'm not going to have that you know at contact in the desert in the next few months it's going to take some time to roll that out i got to make sure people enjoy these things and i got my process down perfect but uh but it's coming <laughs> I like I like that idea though. That's actually like puts more value to it as well as differentiates between the actual artifacts and the replicas then. Bingo. Yeah, and I mean you can feel it plain as day. Like these these things are plastic and they weigh nothing, you know, but it's it's definitely nice to be able to to see the as you know. And and if you drop it and break it, it's 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 not going to be gone forever whereas these real ones you know it's really dangerous so to bring them to a, a show or an event is, is is scary and so to be able to bring a bunch of replicas as well as a couple of real ones is, is much more justifiable too for sure like uh, i know i'm uh, gonna have to get my hands on a couple of the replicas because probably can't afford uh the originals right now but it'd be nice to own them and just Look at that. Yeah, appreciate it. Study Sounds it. I mean, it's it's you know, one thing my buddy said and and when he came over and I showed him to him, he he's the guy that showed me these pieces and and uh he's like, Man, it's crazy. I still feel the energy off of them. And I was like, That's weird. But then I thought about something, you know, artistic works in general. It doesn't have to be the original tape that you recorded music to. Uh, even an MP3 in compressed form still conveys energy, right? And and so that's the way I look at it is, is that the art, the, the, the truth is still within the object. And so that gives it still some sort of, I don't know, but it's captivating. I mean, it's still a captivating piece of, of art, sigils. which is cool, you know? The power of the symbols and the sigils, especially oh, yeah. the ones that genuinely look like um, alchemical sigils on your pieces. Right. Yeah, and, and I, I've got them to glow here, which is kind of cool. Like, not it, it's something that I did that uh, it's not like the originals. Like, when I hit these, you can see, like, when I turn the light off, it doesn't really flash. When I turn the light off here, you see that, like, extra flash in there? Yeah. That That doesn't happen on this stuff at all. There's no flash whatsoever. Um, and that, that flare up is interesting. It is interesting. So I don't know. We've still got so much to learn about this and, and understand. Uh, I mean, what excites me and interests me the most is the, what looks like the alien pictographic script or whatever to start putting that into the AI and, see if it can make sense of it yep it's 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 a little bit more tricky on some of these pieces on on stuff like this you know where it has some almost alchemical values should be really easy to start you know doing comparative analysis but really the the most important thing now is just to get it all cataloged and so we're going to scan all the objects with a high-end 3d scanner that's got ai built into it then we're going to start teaching the llm 
all these images and all these scans. And then it's going to be able to start looking at this one versus this one and looking at the carving lines, the depths, the symmetry, all that stuff to be able to tell us, you know, things about it and compare it to other pieces of art and, and things that have been scanned, et cetera. And, uh, yeah, I mean, building the database is really the important part and that's the most time consuming and the hardest part to get to. And then the technology will probably follow as suit, you know, for sure. It's, it's commendable to document it and try to figure out and make sense of it because they yeah. are who parts out of place artifacts. When I first seen these things, I really thought I could disprove it or find someone that would be like, "No, this is, this is complete BS," and here's why. And uh, what what was interesting is I contacted all these ufologists, all these, you know, people from TV who do these alien shows, thinking that they would be all over this to either a prove it or disprove it, and it was completely the opposite. It was almost like they ran from the topic. Yeah, so many places, and you think that they would want to take samples to be able to show the dating off or to disprove it and whatnot but the fact that no one is open to it just adds to the mystery really i agree yeah that's why if you want to do it right you got to do it yourself <laughs> exactly all right um story i think we'll keep her yeah quarter uh, tonight to an hour if that's all right and sounds uh, great to me man for sure appreciate interesting it, interesting stuff absolutely I appreciate, it. appreciate it steve stig coming on and now it's getting late for you we'll uh have to do another episode with each of you on all of the work that you guys are doing and get the rundown stig from eye of sahara and mike with the test results you're getting back as well like yeah look, i also went to the, the pillars of hercules the the uh gibraltar and jabel musa uh gibraltar is actually named jabel is 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 arabic right jabel means mountain and then it was like this guy uh gibraltar is this guy i just learned it I used to think it's 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 freaking a, a transliteration. Anyways, sorry, I get excited. No worries. <laughs> no, that's no, what passion's it's where it's at. Exactly. It's I loved it's my long trip. Long. I just went on and uh yeah, I spent a lot of money, but honestly, I can't like say, Oh, I wish I, I wouldn't do it. I would do it all over again. I'd spend a little more money. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And it's you worth are it. doing yeah, the, it. Oh, the, you the were mentioning wealth is Steve wisdom. Michaels. You were you were mentioning my uh, St. Michael's and uh I went to Gibraltar and they I missed it but there's the St. Michael's cave and I got some graphics that I grabbed from that from somebody's YouTube channel but uh the St. Michael's cave is just weak, crazy what you were saying earlier totally resonated with what I uh, saw Interesting. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. Thank you. Yeah. Uh it's just a clip I've got but um yeah, check out uh, my channel uh, at Stig and uh, yeah. the, the video that plays, I didn't go there, so I had to grab it from someplace else. But I okay. did go to Hercule, uh, Hercules ca uh, Cave, that's in Tangiers, Morocco, and then I found another cave right there between the Pillars of Hercules, and I went down in there and I grabbed a shot of that. Um, yeah, life is it's good. Connected. I feel good about life. You know, I mean, I'm happy with my life right now. And I've been Same. doing a lot of uh, remodeling and like I hung a door. My door is well <laughs> hung. My door is well hung. <laughs> well hung door. Can't get better than a well hung door and getting back from a trip to the Pillars of Hercules. Yeah, carpentry. I'm tired from all that work. But anyways, I'll stop talking. And yeah, I, I want to talk about it. I got a couple other interviews coming up. I was supposed to go to Taiwan. And I'm like, right now I'm kind of hesitant. Like, oh, maybe I should back off this trip. Because uh, money, one, and number two, just the timing. It's just not adding up for me right now in the head. So I'm going through a lot of uh, mental issues and where I'm going next. I want to go right. back to Europe. I want to go back to Spain. That was awesome. You got to you guys. And by the way, I know how to live in Morocco. Live in Morocco for $16 a day in a <laughs> hotel. I know a hotel. 
16 bucks, man. I oh. I can I can afford that. I'm going. Heck yeah. I got to go back with you now. Yeah, Next $16 year. a day. Forget the rest. Just go there cuz you're not going to cross the street money. here for that. <clears throat> yeah. Right? <laughs> That's the big right. news. Okay. Thank you. Can't, well, thank you and love you all and we will do this again very soon. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Dave. Be back. Have a good and night, guys. Ta-ta. You as well.